Oklahoma State basketball, just the beginning. April 11, 1990 is a day Oklahoma State University and its loyal basketball fans will long remember. That's the day OSU President John Campbell announced Oklahoma State's favorite son had come home. This is a great day for me and for Oklahoma State, and I'm so happy they're home and back home where they belong. You know, from the time that I first decided that I wanted to coach, and that was right here at Oklahoma State, I've always had a dream that one day I might come back to my alma mater. And so the journey began, and it started long before the first basketball hit the floor. Weight training took the early center stage. Under the watchful eye of basketball strength and conditioning coach Leroy Yowster, the team began to get stronger. It allows you in the later part of the ball game to have strength where other ball clubs have peaked and somewhat uh, disintegrated as the ball game progressed. We were able to peak and still keep growing because of our strength and, uh, and just mental toughness on the court. A new system was put in place. Academics would be priority one. The new system involved dedication and discipline. Defense would come later. In the years before, we tended to get tired toward the end of the year. And this year, um, we, we did so much conditioning and it kept strong throughout the season. You know, toward the end, you know, we had, we had so much excess energy that we were able to compete. The winning edge, physically and mentally, began to take shape. The young men worked hard during the offseason. The Cowboy coaching staff was cautiously optimistic as the first official day of practice approached. The players that uh, I inherited are uh, quality people. Uh, when we started practicing October 15th, I wasn't sure how far this team could go, but I did know uh, in my discussions individually with each one of them that they wanted to win, they wanted to be shown a, a path, a, a way to, to get to the mountaintop. The Sutton system paid dividends early. The Cowboys won their first four outings, seven of their first eight, and finished the non-conference portion of their schedule at 11 and two. Wins at New Orleans, DePaul and Marquette gave Oklahoma State valuable momentum heading into conference play. Oklahoma State posted an eight and two record against teams that played in the NCAA tournament. Oklahoma State opened Big 8 Conference play on the road at Missouri. Byron Houston poured in 30 points and pulled down 15 rebounds. But the Cowboys lost a gut-wrenching one-point decision in overtime. This is a tough bunch. Houston scores it, and he was fouled. Miller taking it to the bank now. Despite the loss, the Cowboys returned to Stillwater with a quiet confidence they could compete with the league's best in 90-91. Following almost a month on the road, Oklahoma State returned to gallagher Iba Arena to host the Kansas Jayhawks, who would go on to play Duke for the NCAA championship. An intense defensive battle, the Cowboys upended the Jayhawks 78-73 again in overtime. Got before until then. As soon as I open my mouth, it's all over. Alexander will lay it up in a count. 78-73. The sold-out Gallagher Iba Arena crowd of 6,381 was ecstatic and drained. The 
fans in Gallagher Iba Arena this year uh, were outstanding. If uh, there was ever a group of people that played the part of the sixth man, which is so badly needed in, in college basketball in order to have a successful uh, team, uh, they, they were it. They uh, were super. There were times when uh, we could have been beaten uh, had the crowd not uh, given us that extra lift. Following a controversial road loss in Norman, the Cowboys again returned home and promptly started a four-game winning streak with a 15-point pounding of Kansas State. Five Cowboys scored in double figures as Oklahoma State beat Kansas State for the first of three times on the season. on the road again with back-to-back -back stops at Colorado and Nebraska. The win in Boulder was unbelievable. You had to see it to believe it. Trailing by nine points with 5.20 to go, Oklahoma State ran off 21 unanswered points to win going away 76-66. Sahlstrom threw in two of his three three-pointers on the night to fuel the run. The Cowboys took a three and two conference record to Lincoln to face the nationally ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers who were unbeaten at home. The Cowboys played with poise down the stretch and held the Huskers to one of their lowest shooting percentages of the year. Oklahoma State beat Nebraska by 13 in a sold out Devaney Center. This point, the time remaining in regulation. Alexander with a steal. Big play for Darwin Alexander. Four nights later, the Cowboys ripped Iowa State by 21 to push their conference record to 5-2 and, and send a message to the rest of the league they would indeed be gunning for a Big 8 championship. continued to develop into one of the best defensive players in the Big Eight. OSU started the second half of the conference season with a rematch at Kansas. The Cowboys rallied from a second half 23-point deficit with an amazing 33-10 run late in the game. That closed the gap to six points, but the Jayhawks held on to win by 10. Set Good pass. That side, great feed to Houston. Got to find the shot. Set, off balance, throws it up, and oh, got it off God. the glass. <laughs> Unbelievable. Alexander, he can hit the bombs and does. Oklahoma State would run off five straight wins following the Kansas game. The run began with a thrilling victory over arch rival Oklahoma. Potter, talk about streets. This guy can get on one now. Sutton, great pass. Pippen, he's fouled. Fill it up. 
Cowboys win. The Cowboys even the score against Missouri three days later when they broke open a tight game with a 26 to eight run over an 11 minute stretch in the second half. And here is Houston and there are two more for Houston. Salstrom, and he hits it in underneath. Booker's shot rejected by Pittman. Back come the Cowboys. Williams drives, scores. No, now Williams to Pittman. Oh! OSU battled a hostile crowd and a physical Kansas State team in Manhattan, but showed the boys needed to win on the road. Houston, right away from oh, King, and he draws move. the foul. Great move. I think it's really great tonight that the nation gets a chance to watch an Oklahoma State Cowboy basketball team that's been a big surprise in this country. Byron Houston scored 22 points to lead the Cowboys to a 76-65 win. Oklahoma State will go 19 and five, scoring at the buzzer. Derwin Alexander and OSU wins it 76-65. Larry, this is an impressive club. Houston exploded for 31 points in the Cowboys' 12-point home win over Colorado. With two games remaining in the regular season, Oklahoma State and Kansas were still running neck and neck for the Big 8 championship. The part of the Cowboys. Oh, they went to Good pass by Houston. Oklahoma State took a nine and three conference mark into the home finale against Nebraska. It was the final appearance for seniors John Potter and John Pittman. said so many times uh, seniors are special people because uh, as you go into a season this is their ball club this is the last time that they'll play for Oklahoma State University we got great leadership this year out of Johnny Pittman John Potter the seniors closed out their home careers in style as they led OSU to an 80 to 69 win and a perfect 14 and 0 record in Gallagher Iba Arena it was Oklahoma State's first undefeated season at home since 1965. Both the Cowboys and Jayhawks dropped their regular season finales to finish in a tie for the Big 8 championship. The title was Oklahoma State's second and the first since 1965. It was on to Kansas City in the Big 8 postseason tournament. The Cowboys had to beat Kansas State for the third time in one season, and they did as Potter and Houston scored 20 points apiece as Oklahoma State won by 11. Missouri would be next in the semifinal round.
Missouri turned the clock back to 1983. The Cowboys beat the Tigers in two overtimes that year to win the tournament championship. It was a game that will always be part of Big 8 basketball history. OSU and Mizzou added another chapter in 1990. In a game that literally came down to several final shots, Missouri held on to win 94-92 in double overtime. All the Cowboys were brilliant in defeat, especially Houston, who scored 35 points and pulled down 16 rebounds. Corey Williams, who added 24 points. 24 hours later, the frustration of the overtime loss was eased when the Cowboys were assigned to the East Regional in College Park, Maryland. It marked the first time since 1983 the Cowboys would be playing in the NCAA's Big Dance, and just the second time since 1965. The Cowboys, who won NCAA championships in 1945 and 46, would meet New Mexico in game one at Cole Fieldhouse. <laughs> Oklahoma State avenged an NIT loss to the Lobos last year with a 67-54 win. Houston had 21 points and 17 rebounds. Pittman grabbed 13 boards, and Hatcher led a solid bench effort. That set up a battle with North Carolina State, the ACC versus the Big Eight. In some respects, this was one of Oklahoma State's finest hours in 1991. Oklahoma State strapped an airtight defense on the Wolfpack's celebrated fire and ice backcourt tandem of Chris Corciani and Rodney Monroe. They were eight of 25 from the field and committed 10 turnovers between them. Hatcher the Phantom and Williams the Terminator had a lot to do with those numbers. Houston, Sean Sutton and Potter all hit in double figures, but it was the Cowboy bench that made a big difference as it accounted for 12 points in the 73-64 victory. The win over NC State vaulted the Cowboys into the Sweet 16. The last time Oklahoma State had advanced to the round of 16 in the NCAA tournament was in 1958, when a player by the name of Eddie Sutton was putting the wraps on his career in Stillwater. Oklahoma State literally took it to the limit before losing a game of inches 72-63 to Temple in overtime. Followed by Sostra. It was a great year, and the postseason honors reflected how well a number of Cowboys played. Houston led the way. He was selected Honorable Mention All-America by both the Associated Press and United Press International. He was called Big 8 Player of the Year and a unanimous All-Big 8 selection. Alexander, Pittman, and Sutton were Honorable Mention All-Big 8 picks. Pittman was on the UPI All-Surprise team. Sutton was named to the UPI All-Transfer Team. Oh, nice look by Sutton. Oh, up in the air. I think with the guys coming back that we're even more hungry for next year because we realized we were just, uh, I guess, an inch away from playing North Carolina with the chance to go to the Final Four. Williams joined Houston on the All-Defense Team. Coach Sutton was named Kodak District 12 Coach of the Year. Twenty-four wins, the most since 1983. An NCAA tournament appearance for the first time since 83. Co-champions of the Big 8 Conference, the first such title since 1965. 
The list of accomplishments during Eddie Sutton's first year at Oklahoma State is lengthy. He has brought excitement back to Gallagher Iba Arena and the program back into the national spotlight. He has assembled an impressive staff of assistant coaches. He has brought a family atmosphere back to the basketball program. What he has done in his first year is to restore the NCAA tournament mentality at OSU. Players and fans have tasted victory. They are eager to begin the second season. It has been the first step in OSU's climb back to college basketball's mountaintop. It has been an exciting step, a major step, and it's just the beginning. This next year, one of the reasons I am uh, optimistic, not only do we have uh, some quality players returning, we've got some quality seniors returning. And anytime you have a, a large senior class like we're going to have, uh, they will be the people that will help the coaching staff in so many ways. Uh, they'll better understand that, hey, this is up my last shot. This is the last time that I'm gonna wear a, a cowboy uniform. And because of that, I, I really believe that uh, those seniors, uh, they're a special group of guys, they will uh, help lead us to another outstanding year. Woodbury stripped to the ball. This could be the second basket for Alexander. Nice layup. Passing by the Cowboys for Alexander for three. Set off balance, throws it up, and oh, got it off the glass. Set. Lobbed it. Hatcher with a steal in the bucket. Williams, his third three-pointer.